In this video, I'm going to show you how to finish sculpting this polystyrene heart, and I'm also going to show you how to prep it so that you can then mosaic onto it. Now, if you haven't seen the previous parts one and two of this video, I'll put a link up the top here of the screen somewhere, and you'll be able to go and have a look at those. It is advisable to watch those first because it'll show you how I got to this stage. Now, some of the things I'm going to be using to do this sculpting is I'm going to be using a hot wire. Now, I made this one myself, but these are readily available online if you want to buy one. Also, some retail stores do carry them too. Now, if you don't want to use a hot wire or you don't want to buy one, that's not an issue. You can also use a handsaw. And once I start sculpting, I'll also show you a brief rundown on how to use the handsaw and the polystyrene. Now another tool I'm going to be using is a shaver tool and this allows me to then shave off the polystyrene where I need rather than take it off in big chunks. I'm also going to be using some sandpaper because this will enable us to get a really nice finish on our polystyrene. So anyway, let's get into it. We're ready to start sculpting this. Now just bear in mind this is a simple shape. If you're doing something a bit more complex like an animal, you would need to take into account the front, the sides, the back. Uh, looking from above so that you can get the perspective of what the animal is going to look like. So it is going to require a bit more planning. But on a uh, simple shape like this, which is where we're starting at, then, you know, if you take some a bit more off the side than you want to, you can then readjust it or you can re-stick that bit back on. But don't just go in uh, and take off big chunks unless you know exactly where you know you want your shape to be if you're just gauging it and, and winging it well then just take bits off at a time and don't take it all off one side you know even it up on the other side and the same with the back and of course it depends how you want your heart to look for instance in this shape because it, it's got a flat edge there on my previous heart I just shaved off the corner here I shaved off this corner and the other corner and then sculpted it over a bit but I left a flat edge because I want a mosaic down that side there. But you can totally round those edges over if you want to. So it's totally up to you how you want to handle your heart. If you're doing a heart, if you're doing another shape, again, it's up to you what you want to do. So anyway, what we'll do now is I'll just show you uh, fairly quickly on using a saw. Now a saw is going to be messy and all I'm going to be using is just an ordinary hand saw. Uh, the hot wire will be less messier, so I'm going to actually be doing that. But for the moment, I'm going to be uh, using a saw. And of course, we want to put on protective eyewear and also a mask. So let's get into that. I've got the saw ready. Now we're ready to carve. And all I'm going to do is just show you because the saw is going to be messy. So it's advisable to have a vacuum cleaner standing by. And in some cases, I've actually run the vacuum cleaner while I'm sawing. So it sucks all the bits of polystyrene balls away and it makes it a lot less messier. But uh, this will at least show you what a saw will do to polystyrene. But what I'm going to actually be using very shortly is the hot wire. So I'm going to take off this edge here and I'm just going to get in there. And I'm going to carve off that edge. And that's what, a, that's what a saw will do. And it works fine, it's just messy. Now, you can mark on this area if you want to, you can mark on this uh, heart where you want to cut it. For instance, if I wanted to, just put that away. If I wanted to carve out there, I could put a line there, down there like that, and say, well, that's where I'm going to carve it. Uh, so just a simple line down there on both sides here and here and you can carve it on the edge if you want to do that. But I, because this is going to be just for outside, I'm actually going to wing this because I'm big on winging. So anyway, we'll see how we go. I don't know what happened, but I wasn't recording. So I haven't gone very far. Luckily, I picked up on it. Uh, as I said before I started, make sure that you're going to do this outside. It's just it's wet outside. I'm wearing a mask and I've got the air conditioner on. So it's, you know, I'm not breathing the fumes in. But definitely, if you can, do it outside rather than inside. Now, all I've done is I've started sculpting that edge there, that edge there, and around here and there. Now, you just want to make sure that when you're doing this, that you're keeping an eye on what you're doing. So you're staying focused on the shape you're looking for. Whether you're going to completely curve that heart and sculpt it out, or whether you're going to retain that edge as being flat to give you something flat to work on. So it depends on what you want your heart to look like. 
So anyway, I'll continue on and we'll see how we go. So hopefully this is now recording. And we're just taking our time. We're just letting it slice through and we're not forcing the hot wire through. And you can do this with a uh, handsaw as well. So our shape is now starting to become more bolder, if that makes sense, more curved. Okay, now what you're looking for is a nice shape. So you just keep an eye on the shape. You keep looking over it, turning it round, or however, however you've got your heart situated. And you're looking for a shape. Now it looks pretty rough at the moment, but we'll get this looking really, really good. Well, I hope so anyway. Okay, we're finished with the hot wire. Now what I'm going to do is use this shaver tool to shape it up. And this is where it starts to really get messy. So have your vacuum cleaner ready for when you finish up. And all I'm going to do is shave off now to put it into its shape that I want. And it's just a matter of shaving it. And this is where you can round up those edges and if you want a flat front or you want a bulkier front like a curved front then you'll take more of this area off here so that this area sticks out unless you adhere a piece of foam to the center here and then that will bulk it out but I'm going to have it a bit of a flat front and a bit of a side front because that's the look I'm looking for but everyone's different Now when you look at that, and then you look at that side, you can see exactly what this tool does. And this is where you get that rouse, really nice rounded shape. And of course you're not taking off a huge amount at one time. But the thing is to keep going around, don't concentrate in one area, because you really want to have it even all the way around. And this is another reason why it's so important when you're sculpting, 
to always have lines because it's very easy to get carried away and take off more than what you want or maybe not enough. So that's where it's very important. If you're not sure, put lines on it so you know where to sculpt to. This is really fun. Okay, but see the shape how it's happening now? We'll shake down there to get that right. And this is, this is what I mean. It's just a matter of looking where it needs more taken off it and a little bit at a time and you'll be, you'll be right. And you just make sure it's even all the way around. Okay, that's now looking really good. I've d added a bit more curve to it, and now I'm going to go in for the final sandpaper. Well, that was a bit of a messy cleanup, but I got there. Okay, now on to the sandpaper. And all we're looking at is just to now get the fine shape that we're after. But if you start doing this, and then you really want to take off a little bit more with the, uh, with the shaver tool, you can do so. But I'm pretty well there now, so I'm just after, uh, you know, having a nice finish on it. Oh, and the sandpaper I'm using is about 150. Now, one thing to remember is when you're doing this and you're going to cover this and then you apply your tessera, you need to be able to get in here. So it's always good not to have it really tight and closed in, open it up a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do with this. Stand back and always have a look at where your 
where you've been and where you need to go. And that will ensure that your heart or whatever you're doing is gonna look good. Now I'll show you how to prep it for mosaics. Now I'm just going to pop my mask on because it is fiberglass we are dealing with. Now I'm not using gloves, some people prefer to use gloves but I'm actually not in this particular case but I am definitely using a mask. Alright I've got uh, strips of fiberglass mesh here, uh, self-adhesive alkaline resistant uh, fiberglass mesh and all I'm going to do now is cover the piece in fiberglass mesh and that will certainly um, help strengthen it. And I've pre-cut some pieces here to make it go a little bit quicker. And if you've got any pieces sticking up, and I'll show you a piece here just to, because you won't be able to see that in the middle there. But let's say there's a piece here I'm putting in there. And as I'm laying it, let's lay it across there like that. It's sticking up a little bit here. All we do is we get the pair of scissors and we just put a cut in it like that. And then push one side down and then overlap the other side slightly on top and that will flatten it. And it does help if you have your mesh already pre-cut. And all I'm doing is I'm just slightly overlapping it, cutting it where it needs to be to smooth it, uh, to get it to lay flat. Be careful you don't hit yourself with the pair of scissors because that would not be good and we're just flattening it down and if it's not totally flat it really it really doesn't matter but as long as the majority of it is because it'll just make it easy for you trying to do this on camera is a little bit awkward I must say And again, see how these bits are sticking up here because it's circular. All we're doing is just cutting those, laying that back down, and then that will overlap on that piece there. And you get this really pretty flat looking piece. Now you can use um, galvanized nails as well. I generally don't, but I have seen people use galvanized nails on their piece actually that's a big bit so I won't do that bit yet and what we're trying to do as well while we're doing this avoid areas that are very thick with uh, with the mesh so we'll try not to go over any more of that area there This is probably going to seem like paint drying. And that's really all you do. And you keep doing that all over the heart. And then when you're finished, I'll show you the next step. I finished covering the heart with the mesh tape. Now I'll, what I'm going to do is go over it with my hands and just push it down uh, flat because there are still some areas that are sticking up a bit and those areas could be a bit stubborn so I may even have to go in there with uh, some scissors and just uh, cut the tape in a couple of places and then I'll be able to push it down pretty flat. So I'll do that now and then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll be up to the next stage. Okay I'm up to now covering uh, this heart and I have actually used a few galvanized uh, roofing nails in that because I have heard them spoken about where they work quite good in keeping the mesh down 
and it actually is fun to actually push those in. I actually enjoy doing that. So I thought I'd give that a whirl on this piece and see how uh, it goes. Now I've got my thin set here. It's been uh, slaked, so now it's ready to apply. Now some people uh, prefer to use uh, cement and water and uh, sand and perhaps an additive in that as well. An additive uh, into the cement will make it stronger and that's another option if you choose to go that way. And of course it depends what's available in your area uh, as far as uh, the availability of uh, materials to use. So if you've got cement, certainly you can give that a go. Or if you've got thin set and you prefer to use thin set, then by all means give that a go. It's personal preference and it's up to you. As I said in the first video, this is just my way of doing it and there are lots of options like all mosaics uh, in all areas of mosaics. It's just preference to what you like and what's available uh, to you to actually use. So anyway, let's apply this. Now, one thing I will mention is I'm actually doing this inside. Normally I would do it outside, but it's, quite, it's turned out quite a very warm day. So I'm doing it inside, don't do it on a windy day or a dry day or, or a day where it's high heat because that will dry the thin set out or cement out and of course it won't cure that well. So if you're going to leave it, make sure you put a bag over it if it's a warm environment, but I've got the air conditioner on so I'm just going to apply this without an issue and uh, if you want to apply more coats you can also do that but this is a, a fairly high density polystyrene so I might only put one, one coat on and that will probably be enough. But it is personal preference as to whether you want to apply more coats. And I'm going to use a paintbrush to apply this. Now I have got uh, plastic down on the floor so I don't get it everywhere. And we're going to now go with the tape. Now this is kind of like a slurry. It's, it's, certainly, uh, it's certainly a lot more liquidy than I would normally make but we want that to go into the actual mesh and we're pushing it in. So we're going with the polystyrene so we don't lift it up. And it's quite a fun job to do this. I actually don't mind doing this, but then I don't mind grouting either. And I know a lot of people hate grouting. I mix far too much thin set. But it's better to have too much than not enough. Sometimes it's always best to stop playing with it because you can go over it and then you can be roughing it up and then smoothing it out, roughing it up again. So in some cases it's really best once you've applied it is to let it sit now for probably around about 20 minutes or half an hour. And then what we're going to do is come back and just knock off some of those areas that are a little bit rough on it. But to be honest, it's not that critical, especially if you're putting on another coat. Uh, but you do want it, uh, you know, you do want it looking reasonably good anyway. I don't mind my pieces having a bit of a rough coat to them. Uh, but it is a personal preference as to whether you prefer that with yours. Okay, 
We'll come back shortly. I'll put a lid on this thin set because I may want to use it, uh, add a bit more to it uh, very shortly. So I'll put a lid on this and then we'll come back and uh, see uh, how it turns out. And I'll take some of these rough marks off it. Uh, you know, these, these uh, certainly rough edges. It's been about an hour and I decided to actually put a plastic bag over it because I had the air conditioner on and I didn't want any uh, breeze to come in on it. So by putting it in plastic, it helped protect it from the air conditioner because the air conditioner can dry out the air a bit. So I've turned it off and I thought I'll have a look at this now and see uh, how it looks. Okay, that's all looking fine. Now it's at that stage now where if you have any bits sticking up and you want to smooth out a bit, what we can do is just push it down and I'm just using a sponge. Just pushing it down and that will kind of help smooth out those bits if you've got any sticking up. But if you're putting on another coat, it's not that critical that you get that sort of good surface straight away because you're going to be putting on another coat, but you don't want big lumps in it either. So all I do is I just sort of push it down a bit. Now, one of the things that made sculpting a lot easier for me is when I made my sculpting stand and that just made it easy. I put the heart on top of it and I could turn it around like the one in the video. Now, all I used was, and I got this uh, cross base and this is from some advertising flag, but you can use maybe an umbrella stand or something else you may have lying around. And it could be something second hand. It's not necessarily something that you have to buy. It could be something you come across and you go, oh, that might be suitable. So I used this and then all I did was I got a pole that fitted neatly into it. And then all I did was after that, I got further poles and put them inside each other. And this allowed me to make the height of the stand that suited me. And that's the beauty about this is because you can tailor make it to suit yourself. And then they weren't totally a neat fit, but all I did was I just put them together and put a screw in it. And that's all that's holding it together. Because the polystyrene pieces, whether you're using thin set or whether you're using cement, they're quite light especially the size that I've just been showing you. So I find creating a stand really does make it a lot easier. It's the next day and after I got off camera last night, I remembered that I had that thin set left over. So I actually gave it another coat, uh, you know, because I had it left over and I thought, well, rather than waste it, I'll just put another coat on it, which is what I've done. So it's given a really good coat. Now, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to actually show you if you don't flatten the areas down, either with your hands or with a sponge or something like that, then you may get uh, bits of thin set on top. That's fine. I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you what it's like when that happens, because what we can do now is we can sand those areas down. But then you might go, okay, well, I'm going to apply another coat to uh, the thin set and that's fine as well. And you, then you can smooth it out then. Now, for those people in Australia, just before I go any further, uh, thin set is American terminology for a cement based adhesive. So for those people in Australia, don't go to Bunnings or anywhere else asking for thin set. Ask for a cement based adhesive because if you're going to Bunnings or other places, they may not know what you're talking about when you say thin set. Now, for those people that also want to know the products that I use to create this thin set, I'll put a link up the top here somewhere and you can go and have a look at that video and that will explain how I create the thin set and the products that I use. But any good brand thin set uh, would, would be fine. It's just a matter of make sure you check those manufacturer's safety data sheets and also the technical sheets to, to make sure it's going to be suitable for the substrate, the tester you're using and of course the environment that it's going into. Right, we're ready to go. I have my dust mask and you need one of these and I use a P2 or an N95 dust mask because that's really, really important to help filter the silica dust because thin set, grout, all those contain silica dust which is dangerous to your lungs. So you need to make sure you filter that out because if it gets into your lungs, it's irreversible. Also, a pair of safety glasses. Now, I would normally be doing this outside but I'm just going to show you uh, how to do this and then I will probably do it outside but unfortunately it's not a good day to be doing this outside so that's why I'm doing it in here now and 
as you can see, the bumps are coming off. And that's all you have to do is just take those bumps off. Now, how good you do your final coat, if you're going to put a number of coats on, is up to you. You can get it so it's really very smooth. But because I'm going to be adhering this, uh, the Tessera, with thin set, I don't need to have it totally smooth. But I'm just knocking those big bumps off uh, just to uh, level it out a bit. And uh, then after I've done this, and I've allowed it to cure a bit more, then it'll be ready for applying the tessera. And however you want to apply the tessera, what adhesive you want to use, that is up to you. But like I said earlier, make sure you read those manufacturer safety data sheets and the technical sheets to make sure the product you're using is going to be suitable for what you're going to be doing. Okay. That's about it. It's been about an hour. I wanted to come back in without having to wear my mask and my protective eyewear due to the silica dust. So this piece now, all you have to look at is cutting off this PVC piping. Now you can cut that off with a hacksaw and then apply your tessera to it or you can apply your tessera to it and then cut it off when you're finished. Or you may want to apply your tessera over it down to about here and then cut it off and then continue applying your tessera down. But it's personal preference, it's up to you on how you want to finish it. I generally uh, cut it off after I've applied uh, the tessera. So anyway, I hope this video has helped you. I hope you've taken something away from it. If you have any comments, put them down in the bottom of the comment section and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy.